So welcome to uh, Feature Fridays, and in today's episode, we're joined again by York. So York, nice to see you again. Hey, yeah, my name is Jörg Leif. I work as a technical product manager in VMware's Cloud Provider Software Business Unit. Thanks, York. And for those who don't know, my name is Guy Bartram. I'm Product Marketing Manager for the Cloud Director Suite of Products. And today we're going to be talking about um, something that's been out a little while, um, had a recent update, um, Terraform and the VCD or vCloud Director, as it's still called, uh, Terraform Provider and the functionality that brings. And um, Jörg, you're going to um, kind of could you perhaps start by giving us an explanation of, of what uh, Terraform is, and then we'll mm -hmm. dive into the Terraform provider. Yeah, so Terraform is a tool um, that is maintained by a company um, called HashiCorp. It's a pretty uh, yeah, common and well-known tool that allows people in the IT environment to define IT environments as code. So that means um, you define how a certain, yeah, data center environment or IT component environment or application looks like, which components you need, different um, network devices, different, I don't know, virtual machines in our context, obviously. You specify that in a simple um, text file, which makes it very easy to handle and to um, yeah, version it and get, in, get into uh, yeah, some automation. And then Terraform is a simple uh, command line tool that allows you to automate the creation and the management of these um, environments that you define. So it's um, sort of a tool for infrastructure as a code or as a, um, yeah, a user define a certain environment and then run Terraform to um, create that environment automatically. It is uh, It has a pretty large ecosystem and is very common. So um, these so-called providers that connect or allow the Terraform command line tool to connect different um, platform components um, are built by a lot of different people. It's a, a big open source community there. And with our Cloud Director um, provider, we participate and provide some integration for um, yeah, VMware Cloud Director and Terraform. So it's fair to say that VMware Cloud Director then is uh, kind of Terraform ready in, in that respect. It, that Terraform can um, automate infrastructure jobs against Cloud Director. Yeah, absolutely. So Cloud Director always has been an API first product. So all the functionality that you can do as a provider and a tenant user um, through the UI is also available um, through APIs. Now these APIs are REST-based APIs, which typically allows you to, well, create your client and your automation client for that, but needs a lot of coding. And um, with tools like this Terraform provider, um, all these API calls are wrapped into constructs in the in the Terraform um, language or description language that are much easier um, to use. So we will see later in the demo that in such a configuration file, um, you very easily and very, let's say, human readable can specify how the environment, how your vApp or your organization VDC um, should look like at the end. And then the Terraform provider translates that into many, many different API calls against the Cloud Director API. It. So um, infrastructure as code, very useful uh, capability for, for developers, especially. Um, from the VCD standpoint, is this something that can be offered to uh, tenants as a service or is something mm -hmm. reserved for providers? Uh, no, that absolutely can be used in a, a tenant context as well. So when we talk about VCD, um, of course, you know, we have these two big paradigms of a strict end-to-end multi-tenancy in Cloud mm -hmm. Director and the separation between uh, provider tasks and responsibilities and um, tenant user self-service capabilities. And all of that is enforced in Cloud Director um, through the permission model. And this permission model obviously is also um, yeah, used by the Cloud Director API. Now the Terraform provider um, also recognizes of, of course this permission model and there are different um, so-called resources, so components that you can do in a provider context like creating new um, org VDCs or creating new organizations, new tenants. That is something that a provider would do. But um, there's, there are also a lot of um, resources and components available like a vApp or VM mm -hmm. or catalog items that a tenant can do in their um, 
tenant context. And that is something which makes the Terraform provider so powerful because um, as, a, well, as a service provider, you can use it, of course, to automate your day-to-day -day operations. That's something we will show in the demo as well. But um, you don't have to do anything specific as a provider, your tenant. Users can absolutely use the Terraform provider, download it to um, their development environment, and then use it to automate the deployment um, of vApps. So it's for them, they can just use the Terraform provider as it is, um, connect it to the, um, the tenant API with their tenant credentials, and then use it to automatically consume the resources that they have in, the, in an org VDC. So this is fantastic. So this, uh, so you're maintaining tenancy. You're mm -hmm. able to offer your your tenants then a, a capability where the the application developers or operational admins can automate infrastructure using Terraform provider mm -hmm. uh, capability as code, um, which drives more consumption for the service provider, uh, yeah. less errors, I would assume, mm -hmm. um, and really kind of helps enforce standardization as well. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the Terraform provider talks against the regular public um, Cloud Director API. So again, there's nothing that you specifically um, have to even advertise or configure as a provider. Your tenant can use the provider for their tenant task, but as a provider, if you want to use it as well to automate um, your operations um, and your processes, that of course is also possible. And then you get all the benefits of um, automation in terms of yeah, reducing um, human errors and making the whole uh, process yeah more reliable and um, uh, better repeatable and more efficient at the end. Yeah, so time to delivery, time to consumption, all of those uh, kind of essential monetizable stats will dramatically increase if you start using this type of automation. Okay, yeah. so let's have a, have a look. Um, and what is uh, the current release of of Terraform provider for VCD? Mm -hmm. So the current release is um, Terraform Provider 2.8, mm -hmm. which um, supports the latest 10.1 10 10 yeah. uh, Cloud Director API. Mm -hmm. But as usual in Cloud Director, the APIs are backwards compatible. So you can use the, even the latest Terraform Provider um, against older versions of VCD. Okay, and we, we issue a new Terraform Provider update in response mm -hmm. to what in sort of response to community requirements yeah. uh, or new metric mm -hmm. and new capabilities in vcd mm -hmm. so the project is an open source project um, which you of course can contribute but it is um, sponsored and maintained by vmware engineers in our mm -hmm. uh, cloud director team and they um, react very fast on uh, user reports of issues, but also um, provide or manage the whole roadmap in an open source fashion on the GitHub repository, which we'll, we will see later as well. Okay. The release itself, since it's just consuming the public API of Cloud Director, um, the release cadence is decoupled from Cloud Director releases, and the team usually has um, two to three new versions out per year that they okay. um, release. Yeah. And that's just keeping up with with demand and and I guess uh, increase in the kind of workflow and automation capabilities. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, Gom. Uh, yeah. So usually the releases are, uh, of course, including customer feedback based on on issues that happen, but also expanding the uh, well ever expanding Cloud Director API when it comes currently, for example, with uh, NS6T support. Um, yeah. The latest version 2.8 has support for the new flex allocation model when you create new org VDCs and things like that. So changes and new additions of functionality that um, we build in Cloud Director, of course, is also automatically usually published through the APIs, the Cloud Director APIs. And then uh, the Terraform provider can yeah, consume these new APIs and model this new functionality in these infrastructure as code concepts. So to use Terraform Provider, um, how does someone get started with it? It, it? There's no change on the VCD side of things, right? Because it's just using exactly. our APIs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So you don't so have to do anything on, a, on the VCD side. And the whole Terraform ecosystem is meant to be consumed super easily. So you download Terraform as a single command line tool. Uh, it's a single executable file. There's no, not even a need of installing a big suite of stuff on your PC. It's just a, a single um, yeah, single command line tool. And then um, you have these Terraform description files. So these um, infrastructure as code files that describe the environment. Mm -hmm. And based on which 
endpoints you use in these descriptions. When you run a Terraform command, it automatically downloads the providers that are needed for the specific description. So um, there's, yeah, uh, nothing really to install. It's super easy to consume. So if you wanted to orchestrate a uh, cloud director and another Terraform compliant um, uh, OSS, mm -hmm. you could you could just put that in one descriptor and you just go and pull down the providers for it and run the execution. Yeah, absolutely. And we do have providers uh, which are using that. Um, they use the, well, the VCD part for their, um, I don't know, tenant onboarding, for example. But if they have some other third party load balancers or firewalls, front end internet facing yeah. that they also have to configure for onboarding a new tenant, then they can um, use these Terraform providers for these external systems also to um, have it all in one description file and in one um, automation run. Got it. Okay. Okay. And they are really, um, when you look at the, the Terraform homepage, there are like dozens of providers for all different kinds of cloud endpoints, network components, firewalls, load balancer, infrastructure components. We have one for um, well, for native vSphere, which in Cloud Director context, of course, usually is not very important because tenants don't have direct vSphere access. It might be interesting for some automation tasks for a provider in, within their management domain. Um, but for example, if um, as a provider, you offer some dedicated private cloud offerings where a tenant really has some admin and direct access to vCenter, that might be an, an interesting uh, yeah, way to consume that as well for the tenants. Mm. And which API did you say? Sorry, it was the, the VCD REST API. Is that the one mm -hmm. that's being consumed? Yeah. So this is as secure, I guess, as your tenant cr credentials and uh, yeah. utilizing the API. Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, so, York, what have you got to show us in terms of mm -hmm. uh, a, a quick demo then of Terraform? Yeah, let's walk through um, two examples, one from a provider perspective where I'm going to use Terraform to onboard a new tenant. And then we will have a look at the uh, tenant consumer perspective to uh, create new catalog items and then deploy a multi-tier application into my org VDC. Cool. And that's the plan. And with that, let me switch over to my demo environment. Okay. Okay. So here I'm connected, um, first of all, to our Cloud Director installation as a system administrator. So I'm now a provider admin who wants to onboard a new tenant. That means typically, if you do that manually, a lot of different steps. You would have to create, first of all, a new organization. So that wizard for the new organization, fill out the information and create a new organization. And then it's a new organization VDC to create, which yeah. also is a yeah rather complex with it, with a lot of different options that you define and so on. Mm -hmm. And once you created the org VDC, it goes down to creating a new edge gateway for this new tenant. So another wizard with a lot of different steps. And all that stuff, if you want to do that manually, is of course very yeah, cumbersome, very error prone. And that's something we want to automate because it really is um, always usually the same or a comparable process for um, all the sure. different tenants. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah, with that, let's have a look at the um, yeah, Terraform. So I did download Terraform itself, one second, from the Terraform homepage. So when you just go to terraform.io, you can um, download it. It's an open source project where you also contribute to the, um, the core if you want, but you can download it. It's a single um, execution, executable file um, available for all platforms, Linux, Windows, uh, Mac, and so on. And then um, you just have, let me show you in the example. Um, so on my disk, in the demo, I just have the Terraform executable file. That's the thing that you get when you download Terraform. And in my examples folder, I have two subfolders, one for the provider, one for the tenant. And in the provider section that I'm going to show you, um, there are two files, one for variables that allow you to um, yeah, extract some information um, from the main description file. And then we have the actual main Terraform file. Okay. Now, if we have a look at these files, and, and sorry, you got actually... you got the uh, the demo here from uh, sorry the sample files from the the VCD Terraform provider. 
Um, these example files are on the code.vmware.com example exchange. Okay. However, um, they are based on the documentation of the VCD um, provider. I will show you in a second because the demo when we run that will run for a, a, a oh, yeah. few yeah. minutes in background and then we can discuss that. Okay. So let's have a look at the uh, provider section here. So first of all, the Terraform TFRs file is just providing some information about the environment. So I have my VCD um, URL with the API endpoint. And in my case, I'm logging in to uh, as an administrator, as a system administrator. And some uh, yeah examples for the, the physical resources, my provider VDC network pool and so on that I'm going to use in the example. Mm -hmm. And then in the main Terraform file, we do have the actual um, configuration of the new tenant and the components that we want to connect. So um, we are going to use the Terraform provider, the VCD provider, provide um, all, all the connection details. I'm connecting to the system org as a service provider. And then just scrolling down here a bit, we can see all these different resources that we are going to create. So we are going to create a new organization with the name and a certain um, description and certain configuration. Then we are going to create a new admin for that organization. So a new local user within the cloud director environment. Mm -hmm. Then we are going to create a new org VDC with all the configuration and all the different options that you have here storage policy, quota management, um, the compute capacity, and so on. And for a matter of completeness, we are also going to create a new edge gateway that is um, connected to the external network and provides um, the capability to then create an org network in the new organization. Sorry, York, is there any way to see then um, all of the resources that are supported by the Terraform provider? Because obviously here we're picking mm -hmm. out certain ones. Yeah, that's, um, they are documented in the um, documentation. So when you go on the Terraform provider documentation site, you can see oh, there you uh, there's a 2.8 mm -hmm. provider. And then for all the different resources and data sources, we have um, the description. And that's where we have, um, I don't know, we see the edge gateway, for example, um, even some good code examples how to use these um, parts in the description files. Okay, that makes sense, thanks. Okay, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the idea is to create that routed network at the end and um, connect it to the, uh, to the edge gateway. So that at the end, we end up with a new organization, a new org VDC, an edge gateway and an um, org network um, within that organization. Now, um, yeah, all these steps that would take me a lot of time to do manually <laughs> over and over again. So, I am connected uh, on a command line here, or just a yeah, simple command line. So first of all, to make sure I have the Terraform exit in my path, just going to run Terraform version, but you can see it can find the Terraform executable. And then I'm switching over into the subdirectory where I have these main TF files and the TFRs file. So that's just some convention of Terraform that um, the Terraform file is provided with the main um, TF name because it's usually used, we will talk about this a bit more in the, in the tenant context. It's usually used also um, in a fully automated, I don't know, fashion where the deployment of infrastructure is just one piece of an overall process. For example, if you develop new application and you want to test them in a certain environment, then your Terraform description and the automation around that would be one part of the whole test cycle for the software. You string multiples of these together if you are doing... For example, large... yeah, if you yeah. want to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's start with uh, uh, Terraform init. That is the first command that you run, which checks through the TF file and see what providers you are using. And it recognizes, oh, here we are using the provider, the VCD provider, which is not yet installed because it was a net new installation. So um, it downloads that provider into a, a hidden folder, into that subfolder, which we actually should be able to see here. So you can see now there is a .terraform um, folder in my subfolder. And in there uh, we have in the plugins, the VCD provider that automatically um, got downloaded by Terraform. So that's just Terraform mechanics in the background, nothing that you as a um, user have to care about, just for explanation. Yeah. 
Okay, then the next step is to do a Terraform plan. That now allows Terraform to check the existing configuration of the environment and compare that with the description that you have in your TF file, in your Terraform file, and then create a plan what actions would uh, have to be done. So in our case, since none of the components that we have exist already, um, everything will be planned to create new. Let's do that. And what happens, case, if, um, what happens yeah. if it did exist? Would it just say that um, mm -hmm. the um, object existed and you can recreate it? Yeah, exactly. You can, um, yeah, not really recreate it, but it, it checks the configuration against of the existing object against what you define. And then um, if needed, would run the all, just the things that you have to add to the environment to match the, the configuration file. Can it be used to, used to modify? Uh, yes. All right. Okay, so um, in this case, it's just the way the example is built. Um, I'm going to specify a VDC name. That would be something that you perhaps um, automatically provide as well as a command line parameter or even put into the, the file. Mm -hmm. so in this case, it's provided T um, VDC. Small caps. And now it runs through the TF file and checks with these small green boxes. You can see um, all these things um, have to create a net new. So we have five new resources to add um, in some with the user, the org organization, the org VDC and so on. Um, nothing to change because nothing exists yet and nothing to destroy. And then we can do a Terraform Apply. Again, typing in the VDC name. Oops. And now it will again plan that quickly, show me what to do, and then I have to confirm. Of course, all that stuff can be fully automated as command line parameters if you want to do it. Yeah. But just for the demo to see it more. And now we can see in background, it is already creating some things. So the Terraform provider from the command line does all the needed API calls to the Cloud Director API to create an org, create an user, create an org VDC, creating an edge gateway and so on. And that is now th something If we switch over to our provider view and go to this um, tasks, the recent tasks, you now can see that there have been certain tasks called to the API to VCD to create a new organization, enable a user, create an org VDC, and now creating an edge gateway. Mm. If we go to our list, we can see now, now we have a net new T3 organization. That um, T3 organization is configured with the things that we specified in the Terraform file. And we have an org VDC that has been created with the name T3 VDC. Yeah which is connected to that org, also they are configured with the uh, specification we had in the TF file. And the edge gateway, that is something that takes a while because that in background, of course, needs the deployment of some virtual machines and power them on and power cycle them and so on. So that yeah. will um, take a while in background. But you can see that very easily with a simple command line run with one executable file and the description file, you can automate a whole bunch of steps that you otherwise would have to do manually um, as a service provider in this context. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. I can see that, how that would be really useful, um, you know, to service providers and to tenants, uh, you know, service providers for creating new tenants or automating, um, even perhaps things like automating a, uh, a portfolio option to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, configure a new gateway, for example, yeah. um, as a service, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When I mean, when we look at the um, possible data sources to check the existing environment and the mm -hmm. resources that are available that you can automate, um, it covers a lot of the available things in the APIs. And we have um, service provider partners that use this Terraform provider very extensively for quite all the different yeah services that they offer to their tenants and even um, did some analysis of what are common support calls or common changes in the environment, like um, requesting more resources for a given org VDC or creating new edge gateways, changing firewall rules and stuff like that. And for all that, they can these things can be 
pretty easily modeled in these Terraform files and then um, automated. Yeah. Without, um, well, of course, you have to learn about the um, the definition of the different components in components in the um, in the Terraform file. But the documentation, as you can see, is pretty extensive. Has some good um, reference and some examples that you can use to get started. And that's a much faster way to automate things than if you would have to do manually um, rest calls against the Cloud Director API and use the Cloud Director API description to figure out, well, to create a new catalog, what's the exact rest call I have to make to automate that. And then, yeah, imagine that with the whole set that we are doing right now as a provider in our example. And you said that that Cloud Director maintains backward compatibility for API calls in this respect. Mm -hmm. So providers that are using this today would be sort of guaranteed a yeah. few versions back, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So typically, I think it's three, uh, I think. two or three versions yeah. back of, of Cloud Director, and therefore also the API um, versions. And the, even then, the, um, the API functionality gets deprecated in certain versions. So you have a, about one and a half to two years of um, time <laughs> to mm. update your environment. And even the corresponding um, data sources and the corresponding objects just in the Terraform provider then are being deprecated. So there might be um, some things, not sure if I can find a, an example. Yeah, for certain resources, um, you get the yeah, the notes and the warnings, and if some of them are deprecated because they are going to be um, replaced by another more powerful construct in future, then uh, yeah. you would get that as a warning here as well. Right, right. And this is something that um, I guess a developer can call directly from their develop environment um, or include as a part of an application. Um, but equally, have you seen, how have you seen providers kind of using this? Are they using this with something like vRealize orchestration to orchestrate? Uh, Terraform automatically? Um, yeah, that could be possible, um, mm. depending on what else you would use in, in your um, automation processes. Again, we have seen all the components that are needed. You need one executable file and these Terraform text files, so you can install that pretty much everywhere. Mm. From a tenant consumer perspective, it's typically a, a developer user who wants to just automate the creation of virtual machines. For a provider, operator user, that could be, I don't know, um, an operator that, uh, like we did, just uses these template files to create onboard new tenants with a simple command line. But you could also, of course, um, use that in a bigger context if you have some, I don't know, an order system or some, some um, service catalog on top that manages the, the overall services where you're Cloud Director based infrastructure as a service offerings are just one part of that. And then you would call these uh, Terraform automation automatically as part of the bigger examples or the bigger um, automation. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. All right. Um, okay. So, uh, did you want to show any more examples or is that mm -hmm. that's done now? I can see the gateway yeah. is complete. So, the, gate, the gateway is configured. Um, we have our Org VDC and we have a new user. Um, let's just open up that Org VDC now for the demo purposes in the tenant portal. Pride of my work, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so just, um, I'm still locked in as a system administrator, but now locked into the T3 organization that we've seen. And um, let's just check in the administration tab. We have our T3 admin user that has been created as an org admin. And when we look at the data centers, you can see we have our T3 org VDC that's fully created. We get the uh, network connection and we have the edge gateway fully configured. So that's now our organization as a T3 admin, as a tenant administrator that we can use in the same way as any other um, org VDCs. Brilliant, that's awesome. Okay. And how often are releases your Gov uh, Terraform, do you think, of the Terraform provider? Um, so the Terraform provider, we can have a look at that. But before we look at that, um, let's just switch over to the client example or the tenant example because that sure. runs for some longer time. Okay. Um, so in the different set of files that I have here for the tenant, I again have my Terraform uh, variables. Now I'm logging in as a tenant admin, mm -hmm. T1 admin to an existing org VDC that I have from, <laughs> yeah, that I get from the provider. 
and in my main TF file, and that's now a pretty long one because it does <laughs> certain steps. It again uses the, uh, the Terraform provider, the BCD provider. And um, then there's a whole thing to be configured. So in this example, I'm going to create a new catalog with uploading a new catalog item, so a Photon Linux OVA file. And then I'm going to use this OVA file to deploy it multiple times to mimic some sort of a three-tier application into um, or connected to different org networks that are being created. So there are a lot of resources here and it's a lot of text because it's a pretty fully blown example, as you can imagine. So at the end, we should end up with a vApp that has multiple virtual machines deployed with multiple networks configured and um, all connected through the edge gateway and a whole bunch of um, firewall rules and load balancer configurations done at the end. So that example will run for quite some time. And while it's running in background, we will discuss about the Terraform project itself and where you can find these examples. Okay, okay. so here we also can see that's the old output that our Terraform um, yeah, provider level is completed. So let's go back one here. Let's go into the tenant. Again, doing a Terraform init to get the provider because that's really based on the uh, individual folder where we are in. That's the big advantage of, or one of the, let's say, conventions of Terraform, that it's not a uh, installation that is somehow related to the system, but everything that Terraform does and changes is really within the folder that you have your Terraform files. So um, it is it runs completely independent from any environment. I could use this folder and place it into a different, my developer's PC and run it from there or place it as part of a uh, yeah, full test cycle for during an application development process, something like that, and it would run in the same way. Got it, yeah. Okay, let's do a Terraform plan again, which now reads through this longer, longer file. Um, you can see at the end some uh, warnings because some warnings here. Yeah. yeah, some changes in the just the syntax that Terraform has in the latest versions, but they um, are so deprecated, so it will still run. It's just that the examples are based on some older Terraform version. But um, if we go a bit up here, you can see at the end. In this case, we have now 18 different <laughs> new objects to create because it's a lot to do. Um, yeah, zero to change, zero to destroy. So it will run for a while. And with that, let's do the Terraform apply and run the thing. So it will again run through that planning. And it's going to ask me to type in yes for confirmation because we are going to make a lot of changes. Okay. So, yeah. When you do those, uh, that that uh, that plan, and that plan says eighteen to create. Um, zero to modify, zero to delete. Is there particular flags you set for modify and delete in the, the main uh, uh, No, file? it's the, the concept is that you describe how the target environment should look like. Right. And the, um, the plan compares the existing environment to that description. So we can do that um, later while this is running or when that is completed, we are going to run the Terraform plan again. And then we should see that, oh, we already have a whole bunch of that stuff created, but <laughs> some more is missing. And then it will just run the missing parts, which also uh, is very okay. helpful because it, yeah. it helps you um, if you have a rather complex procedure like we do, deploying, creating a new catalog, deploying a lot of virtual machines. If something goes wrong, on the way, you can just run it again and it will just, yeah, sort of resume and continue only the steps that um, haven't been completed yet. Yeah, I can see here they've got a lot of uh, kind of timings and elapsed times going. I, I, so it's running everything sequentially? Um, uh, no. Or the, no. Okay. The Terraform is intelligent enough to build a so called resource graph built based on the definitions. So when we have in the, let's look at the main Terraform file. Um, in these sections where you define the different things that you create, like here a catalog and then upload mm -hmm. a catalog, um, you can define dependencies in between the different con uh, 
components. And I see. It depends on yeah. Example. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. and that depends on tells Terraform. Okay, you can run certain things in parallel, but for some parts, you have to wait until this first resource is complete. Right. Right. And Terraform takes care of that wait operation. Is it, is it a, mm -hmm. um, an open socket or is it a poll for completion type API? It's, it's rather a poll for completion. Right. But that, yeah. that depends on the actual implementation of the um, of the provider. Okay. So that connects the, to the to the endpoint and makes the API calls. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. Let's switch over. Here I'm logged in as a tenant one into the tenant one um, VDC. So that's where we are running these and uh, the example against. And if we have a look at our oops at our libraries here, you can see I didn't show you the original, but so you have to. Trust me on that one. <laughs> we have seen um, we have been created a, a new example with a new catalog called operating systems. So that's the catalog that has been created. Actually, you should see it in the in the recent task. That yeah, there's you a lot uploaded of stuff. A, a yeah. template to it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot in a lot of stuff going on here. We have the template that's being deployed is that photon one. That's the one that we've specified. Yeah in the in the terraform file mm -hmm. and now in background you can see all the tasks running obviously um, it is deploying a bunch of virtual machines into v apps and creating a lot of networks so if you can see in the oops, sorry in my org vdc when we go to the network section we now can see that it has created these three demo net something one that's sort of for the three tier environment for the web server to connect the web servers, one for the database servers and for the app servers. And then it creates the demo V app currently with two virtual machines where the web servers or simulated web servers are <laughs> yeah, being deployed into, which then yeah. are connected to the, um, yeah, to the web and the application network in background. That's that's doing quite a lot. <laughs> that that does a lot, out. yeah. So yeah. absolutely. So yeah. and that's also why it, why it will take a, a while and run in background. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, consider you would have to do that manually, which yeah. might be okay for some environments where you get sort of the um, <laughs> pets versus cattle discussion, where you get a, a single VM that you maintain and it, it's something special. But if you deploy environments that are part, for example, a, a software development lifecycle where you create an application and you want a test environment for that application, like here for a web application, for example. Then um, typically these environments just live for one test run and then you throw them away and want to create a net new one automatically. And that is something, of course, you don't want to do manually at all. And that's where these uh, infrastructure as code concepts and Terraform comes comes in. Yeah, sure. and. Um... I think we should sort of had a brief look at the var file. So the the var file contains all the variables for mm -hmm. your for your runtime. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that okay. is something. Um, depending on your let's say structure of you uh, where you maintain these files, typically in the Terraform var file, that's where you have environment specific things like mm -hmm. the connection, username, password, and in the main TF file, that's the component that describes the environment um, in a, well, the generics parts that are not environmental specific. Um, let's assume, for example, just to um, make that concept clear, you have this web application and um, as a, uh, you might have, as a, uh, let's say a software development company, you build this web application and from a provider, you get two different org VDCs. One org VDC, that's a test org VDC with certain specifications. And then uh, another org VDC that is meant for production. And in this case, you would um, have all these environment specific things like the org VDC names in the variables file. And in the main TF file, only the things that are sort of common across the, the different environments. And could you reiterate through that Terraform, I suppose you just have different var, var names for different variables. You know, if you're provisioning multiple customers, for example, with the same yeah. so core. In, mm -hmm. in, in this case, you would either use some template mechanism here to um, replace that more or less on the fly or with some scripting logic, mm -hmm. or you have um, multiple folders or yeah. deploy them into in as multiple <laughs> stages, let's say, from your um, overall automation. 
yeah, you probably automate the creation of the different folders and the config files because yeah. that way you can always overwrite them if you need to. Exactly. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, the variables, by the way, um, here as example, just to run them easily, <laughs> uh, you can define them as variables in a file. But if you don't specify that file, when you run the Terraform command, it would just ask you for all these information. So yeah. um, that's something that can also be done. If you don't specify the variable content, then the, a human user has just to type them in, or you would add them as a command line parameters to the execution of the Terraform command. Yeah, got it. OK. Um, yeah, while the thing is running, let's discuss a bit about the release cycle. You can see that <coughs> virtual machines are being created and started. So take some time here. Yep. Um, the Terraform provider itself is sponsored by VMware and maintained by VMware engineers, but it is an open source project, um, so according to most, or I guess all of the other um, Terraform providers as well. And Terraform itself also is a uh, open source project on, on yeah, GitHub. GitHub yeah. And when we go to the Terraform provider, um, there is a GitHub repository for that, where you can see we have a, yeah, a lot of different commits. A lot of them are made obviously by VMware engineers, but there are also um, uh, some community contributions to that. So um, it's an open source project and you can, as a, either a provider or even some tenant users, just fork that repository, do some changes and then make the pull requests to um, yeah, provide them and contribute them back to the community. And we can see in, in even the issues section where people can provide feedback or add feature requests or things like that is very active. We have a whole, yeah, team of engineers monitoring that and reacting on that. And even the whole roadmap planning is done through the, the GitHub issues here. So okay. it's a very active community with VMware engineers uh, maintaining and owning it, but a lot of contribution from partners and um, tenants as well. And when we have a look at the releases, just to get the timelines, you can see there are um, yeah a whole bunch of releases, typically um, a few releases per year that um, the team pushes out, depending always a bit on the on the timing and the well, urgency of feedback. Yeah, yeah, and also VCD releases, right? Lining. Yeah. I know the recent one there was mm -hmm. uh, a release a couple of days later because it was support yeah. for 10.1. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So that that was some example here that we had March and then uh, the other one just yeah mid April, but usually it's a uh, three three months release cycle as you can see. Okay, that's great. Okay, so people can go and download Terraform from Terraform. Mm -hmm. yep. um, go and actually look at the um, the examples yep. here in GitHub. Mm -hmm. So the provider gets downloaded automatically as soon as you specify it. The documentation is here in the uh, also on the Terraform homepage with the Cloud Director provider, where you get the individual, let's say, example snippets. And the examples that I used um, are on Sample Exchange. So let's have a look at that as well. So I'm here on uh, code.vmware.com. That's our community where we have all things related to APIs and code examples through all the VMware product portfolio. So we have API descriptions for Cloud Director, uh, Power CLI examples, links to GitHub. There is even a, um, when you join the community, there is even a Slack community there where you can chat directly with other people's using and automating against uh, VMware product. So that's not, um, limited to Cloud Director or Terraform that's covering all the VMware automation APIs that we have. And then there's a huge section for um, sample exchange where people, um, everybody can share some examples. And when you just look for Terraform here, then I think it's the latest one since it's pretty new. Yeah, almost. <laughs> it's the, yeah, we have the VCD Terraform examples and if you download that here, that's the examples, exactly these two folders for provider and for tenant that I um, show oh, you yeah. in, the, in the examples. And that's, okay, by the right. way, also uh, managed on a GitHub repository. So if you want to make some changes or um, contribute to that, feel free to um, use the, the GitHub repository and get direct access to the, the source code and change and manipulate that. Brilliant. Yeah, that's fantastic. OK, um, yeah, with that, let's see how our demo is running nicely. So we got an, and a fully completed uh, configuration of our multi-tier app as one part 
of the configuration, if I do it in here, in here it runs some, um, yeah, just some command to get uh, an external IP address from a component that is being deployed. So if I, ah, Windows, give me a second. <laughs> So when I look at the Edge IP, it's 100.3 and open that up in the browser. .3. Then, oh, nice effect. We cannot see that. Why can we not see that? Uh, yeah, because wrong port. I will show in a second. I think it's port 8888. Yeah, so that's the REST, the <laughs> simulated REST application that we were deploying. So in this case, the um, this IP address is the external IP address of the Edge Gateway, and we have some NUT and firewall configurations that have been fully automated through the Terraform automation run. So if we have a look at our um, organization as an org admin, we can see in the edges that we had that uh, edge that was uh, partly pre-deployed. But when we look at the services configuration here, takes a while to load, um, we can see that the automation has created a bunch of new firewall rules that are um, configured to access the environment and access these apps that have been deployed. So the, the web application, our simulated web application that we deployed. And um, there should be some NAT routes, yeah, as you yeah. can see, um, that have been configured. So this, for example, 8888 uh, NAT route that now allows external access into the newly created vApp with the uh, web applications. So when we look at the vApps here, you can see our demo web environment, um, which has- 1.2, 1. 1. wasn't it? Yeah. So- Oh, 2 to 1, sorry. Two yeah. To one. Mm -hmm with the, uh, the net target, with a web server, database server, application server, um, uh, or the networks with different virtual machines, in our case, two web servers, application server, and so on. And uh, that fully sort of connected and wired up to the NSX load balancer that's provided by the Edge Gateway in Cloud. Wow. Well, it might take a little bit of time to write that configuration file, but once it's written, <laughs> yeah, that's, it's that's a very, powerful, very powerful file. And that's yeah. also why we shared this example, because that's a very complex and complete example. Mm. Um, usually, if you just start out creating a simple virtual machine, um, that file looks like, I don't know, 30 lines of code instead of 130 lines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, brilliant. York, that's been so cool. I've really, you know, I've never really kind of dived into the detail on this, mm -hmm. but it's it's fantastic to see this in operation and, and really to understand the power that it, it kind of brings to to tenants and providers. Uh, I think it's a fantastic opportunity mm -hmm. to explore offering uh, infrastructure as code. Yeah, absolutely. And again, remember, there's nothing special that you have to configure as a provider or a tenant user, you just consume it, type in your credentials, either as a provider to the system org or to your org VDC as a tenant user, and then use Terraform to automate things in VCD. So there's um, yeah, <laughs> pretty much instant value of using yeah. that. And since you can find the examples and the well-documented um, documentation out there on the Terraform homepage, it's a very easy way to get started and very fast way to get started. There you go. Well, you heard it here. So <laughs> jumpstart your infrastructure as code, go and download, uh, you know, the Terraform provider and look at the examples and, and get going. Drive consumption on, on VCD. <laughs> York, thank you very much. You're welcome.